What's going on, UFC fans? We are here in Denver. This is the watch list for UFC 208. John Anik alongside Sean Shelby and Mick Maynard is here, ladies and gentlemen. Good to have you on board, man. How's it going? It's good to be here. Doing great. All right, so we're going to rifle through some of the fights on the main card. Give you some insight as to maybe how some of these fights come together and, of course, what the matchmakers' expectations are for UFC 208. Sean, we'll start with you. The inaugural Women's Featherweight Championship. Holly Holm, Jermaine Durandamy. They say if you ain't Dutch, you ain't much. <laughs> Jermaine Durandamy, excited, obviously, for a championship opportunity, her first in the UFC. Sure. Jermaine, one of the greatest Dutch kickboxers of all time. Upwards of 40 fights, upwards of 40 wins, undefeated. Almost half of those are knockouts. Obviously, uh, her bread and butter is her stand-up. Good old-fashioned kickboxing match in the octagon. And then you have Holly Holm, who you know, has the boxing credentials. So Jermaine was brought into Strike Force primarily to fight Chris Cyborg at 145 pounds. It was 145 pounds, and it wasn't until later that she dropped down and, and uh, decided she wanted to go 135. Right. So I think she's right at home at 145 pounds. And there's something to be said for fighters now fighting up a weight. You right. see that more and more, right? And you see fighters actually performing better at a weight class up than what they were at before. So I think it's a really interesting, intriguing, inaugural 145 pound clash. I would agree with you there. You know Holly quite well. Your expectations yeah. for her now up a division. Holly's someone I think fits right into 145. Yeah. Holly cuts a lot of weight to get down to 135. Right. I believe that she fought in boxing in maybe 147 or around that same weight class. So I don't think it'll be very difficult for her at all and I expect her to transition perfectly. And once, like Sean says, you may actually look, you right. may be Better. more comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Among the late additions to the main card of UFC 208, one of the consensus greatest of all time fighters, Anderson Silva, returns against Derek Brunson, who for several years was running roughshod through this middleweight division. I think an interesting crossroads fight for him and obviously an opportunity for him against an MMA legend. Yeah, I think it's going to be an interesting contrast when you look at both of their styles. Yeah. You know, Anderson tends to start a little bit slow at times, feel it out, and then he gets rolling and he gets, finds his rhythm and he, and he puts the hammer down when he can. Uh, whereas Derek, his last five fights have ended in the first round. One of those, of course, was not in his favor against Rob Whitaker, and he was incredibly disappointed about that loss. So I don't think he expected to get such an incredible opportunity this fast. Right. I think he was kind of hoping to kind of sit back a little bit and did, uh, uh, kind of try to build himself back up a little yeah. bit. But how do you say no to this? Yeah. You know, you're getting the opportunity to fight the greatest of all time. And if he wins this, he's right there in the mix. So yeah. I think it's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting to see. I expect him to come out fast, and I expect Anderson to do what he does. So it'll be a good contrast yeah. to start. You talk about an opportunity for Derek Brunson to put that Robert Whitaker fight behind him. Anderson Silva, February 11th on pay-per-view in Brooklyn, New York. Not too shabby. Also on the fight card, Dustin Poirier taking on Jim Miller. Two lightweight veterans here. Very interesting and high stakes fight here at 155. I think Poirier has looked phenomenal. Yeah. He did get caught in the fight against Johnson, but he has been hitting on all eight cylinders, you know, for his last few fights since making that jump up to 155 pounds. A bit of trivia is, you know, is uh, actually, even though Joe Silva is retired now and not any longer with us, he still made fights, so he's got uh, a few more fights still to come that he put together, and this is one of them, and it's a, it's a great, yeah. great fight. Yeah, it's a great matchup. Just two guys that just go zero to 100 right when that bell yeah. rings, and, and uh, I'm, I'm excited for that fight. And you just couldn't get through the watch list without the Joe Silva plug, right. but it's okay, Joe, we miss you. But we got Mick Maynard here, and I want to ask you about Jacare Souza taking on the consummate veteran in Tim Boach, who has really made a career of spoiling other guys on their path to contention. Jacare Souza, a guy who a lot of people think still is the best middleweight in the world right now. Huge opportunity for him to sort of stay in the mix at 185 as he draws both here. It is, and you know, Jacare had to put out a Craigslist ad to get a uh, to get a fight, so that's how desperate he was getting yeah. to, to try to get a matchup as the top of the middleweight division gets sorted out. And like you said, a lot of people are overlooking Tim. He has heavy hands, he has good wrestling. I'm sure he's gonna hope to have success preventing the takedown. Obviously, Jocko Ray's submission game is unbelievable. Right. But Tim has great hands, so if he can keep it standing, I think it puts it in his court, so to speak. So, I don't know if you guys can answer this, but for a guy like Jacare Souza, on the cusp of a title shot, potentially, I mean, how much of an emphasis is on the finish and really making a statement on, on a massive pay-per-view? This is a really risky fight for him, Yeah. you know, but he also doesn't want to get rusty. And again, I don't think the fans, like Mick was saying, give uh, Tim enough credit, I agree. you know? So he really has nothing to lose in this fight. In terms of the finish, I mean, I mean, I know it's hard for a fighter. You're, you're constantly battling risk and reward. I mean, how much do you look at that as a matchmaker, not just going in there and getting a win that at least Vegas says you're supposed to, but going out there and, and dust them again? 
I mean, it's important. I don't know that necessarily in this particular fight, yeah. there's a whole lot of emphasis on it. I think, in my view, he's very clearly right at the top of the weight class. So, yeah. I mean, he's he's done his done his time. He's been waiting it out very, very patiently. And, uh, but like Sean says, it's risky. He's risking it all right here. He has to stay busy. He needed a fight. And Tim has the capability, has the ability to beat him. But as far as style points go, I don't think in this particular fight, it's gonna matter as much, but I don't think it'll matter. Yeah. I think both of these guys go for the finish and in style points aside, it's that's what's gonna happen. Well, great job on this fight card as usual, man. UFC 208, February 11th, the MMA leader returns to pay-per-view live from Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. With that, for Sean Shelby, Mick Maynard, I'm John Anik. We appreciate you watching the watch list for UFC 208.